Hello my friends and welcome to a Patreon exclusive painting tutorial. This is a landscape scene of the ocean and the sun setting over Oahu. Uh, this is actually Waikiki Beach in Hawaii. So the colors we're going to use today are sap green, ultramarine blue, pink, brilliant red, red orange, violet, black, teal, thalo green, thalo blue, cerulean blue, flesh tint, white, burnt umber, cadmium yellow medium, and primary yellow. We're using acrylic paint today. This is a 12 inch by 16 inch canvas panel, but you're welcome to use any size canvas you'd like. We're also using a variety of brushes. I have some Liquitex uh, paint thinner slash uh, slow drying medium that we're gonna use as well. And we're just getting started here using a mix of primary yellow and white, taking back and forth brush strokes at the top of the canvas. Now mixing in a bit of that cadmium yellow medium, which gives us a little more saturation in our yellow and a little bit more warmth. Mixing that into the yellow and white on the little palette there. And for my palette, I am using parchment paper. Uh, parchment paper is disposable. I just tape it down to my painting table so that I can have a nice flat surface that's not gonna move. And then whenever my paint dries or I'm done using it, I just rip up or I just fold up the uh, excess parchment paper and I just pitch it and I get a new roll uh, when I'm ready to continue painting. Now we're blending in a little bit of orange and we're taking the excess paint off the brush, continuing to make those back and forth brush stroke movements and just blending that orange right up into that yellow color. And you get a nice smooth blend by taking the excess paint off the brush and just softly blending back and forth until that orange just goes right into your yellow. You don't want to press too hard when you're doing that. Now I'm adding a bit more white and continuing to keep that orange in there so we're getting more into the reddish pink spectrum and I'm adding that on the outer edges where the orange was. Just going back and forth, letting it blend into the orange and then blend up into that yellow. Here I'm taking a little bit more white. Also blending in a little bit of my flesh tint, my crimson, a little bit of purple, and a little bit of that phthalo blue. And I'm trying to get a cool purpley blue that's not too saturated. And I'm just going back and forth right under that orange and pink color there. And I'm letting that blend up into the color above it. Taking the excess paint off the brush again. Now blending a little bit more of my pink into there. I'm just adding a thin layer of pink right above that one. So you saw that I held the brush at an angle to get a nice thin little layer there not to completely cover the canvas, but just get a nice thin little layer. And now I took the excess paint off the brush and I'm rubbing that in and trying to create a nice smooth transition again. These are like hazy little clouds that are just like far off in the distance. And they're just like picking up those cooler tones, uh, but they aren't in focus enough for us to get those like cool shadowy clouds right in the Close, closer sky. <laughs> They're very far in the distance sky. Now here I just took some of my orange, maybe a hint of red in there too, and I just kind of dry brushed that on initially. I didn't even put too much paint on there. And then I took the excess paint off my brush and blended that back up. It's very important to work lightly here. You don't want to overpower the canvas with a ton of paint or it's not going to blend as smoothly. You might have to wait longer before you can blend if you use too much paint. Now I'm adding a little bit of my ultramarine blue to the sides 
and just letting that blend in. And that's just pulling down the sides of the canvas, uh, which helps us to bring the attention right into the center of the canvas. Still making those back and forth brush strokes. All right, now we're switching to a small round tipped brush and we are going to mix some colors for the sun and the sunset. So I just mix a little bit of my, just a tiny hint of my red with my cadmium yellow. And that's just to give that initial warm glow right around the sun. So our sun's really small here. It's not just like standing out like a big massive sun that's taking over the whole painting. It's just this little guy far off in the distance, right about to set over the horizon line. And we have this little warm glow right around it. Once you get that warm glow put in, you could let the paint dry, but I'm just going right back in here and going right over that with my white with a hint of primary yellow. And that's giving me the appearance of a bright sun right about to set. Just touching up the edges a bit here. I took the excess paint off the brush. I'm trying to do a little tiny blending just so I don't have that super harsh line of the white uh, for my circle shape for the sun. All right, now we're starting to blend some of our cooler blues here. We have our phthalo blue, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue it looks like. And we're just taking the brush, holding it in a flat manner so that I can get a nice straight line without covering up too much canvas. And I'm just getting the horizon line between the sky and the ocean. And because I am sitting to the left side of this painting, I painted a crooked line. <laughs> because from that viewpoint, that looks like a straight, flat horizon line to me. Uh, so what I end up doing is I kind of block the camera for a bit and I fix up my line. So here we just did that. I fixed up my line and it's now a nice zero degree horizontal line for the contact between the water and the sky. I blended a bit more white in here and I'm just now taking back and forth brush strokes, trying to bring that blue gray color down from the horizon line and closer to the foreground. Continuing to add more white and hints of that green color. The water in this part of Hawaii is like super turquoise, really beautiful. So even at sunset, you get the reflections of light on the water, but you can still see some of that turquoise water below. It's so beautiful. Now I'm starting to make some of my warmer colors, my yellows and my flush tint, my pink, a little bit of orange into the ocean for where the light is reflecting off of the water. And I'm just continuing to make those back and forth brush strokes, trying to cover up all the white space on the canvas. mixing a little bit more of my phthalo green, some of that uh, turquoise green, and my ultramarine blue, and that is giving me more of this turquoise water look. We get more of that turquoise vibrant color in the foreground, and it turns more gray in the background. And I'm just continuing to add even a little hint of phthalo blue here, it looks like, just to darken the value a bit. And I still have that layer above it, it's still wet. So I put that paint down there and I let it blend right on up and into the blue-gray watercolor that's above it. Here I added a bit more white to the color on my palette and I'm keeping this arc shape here because there's a little barrier uh, to break the waves. Uh, it's like a sediment barrier to it like helps prevent erosion on the beach 
and it's just like a little tiny uh, rock wall basically that sticks out into this little bay and that's why we have this little arc shape here and then it kind of goes flat on the right side of the canvas because there's that little there's going to be a little rock wall added in on the right side kind of sticking out into this little bay and it's nice that you can actually go swimming in this area and it just keeps out the water's really calm because it's kind of like protected by that little barrier so once i got the water base layer of paint in i mixed some of my browns and we're just going back and forth and now we're adding the sand i started off with it looks like burnt sienna, burnt umber, or maybe some purple or violet. Uh, and then we're starting to add in more white and flesh tint and just kind of cool that tone down a little bit uh, while continuing to cover up the white on the canvas, getting that nice little beach base color painted in. At first I wanted to continue the sand all the way down to the foreground. In real life, when you're looking at the scene, there is like a section of green uh, grass at the very base of this canvas is where it would be. And then we have some palm trees that come out from the grassy area. So initially I was like, oh, I'll just take out the grass and just make it look like the palm trees are coming out of the sand. But then I changed my mind. So <laughs> I put in a little bit of that uh, cool blue and black mix in with my browns at the, at the beginning there, but you don't have to do that. If you want to skip over that, you can just go right to this step where I add some sap green, phthalo, blue, and burnt umber, and I just get a base color for my grassy area at the base of the canvas where my palm trees are going to be growing out of. This color looks a little bit lighter than it should because it's blending with the uh, gray blue color behind it so I do go back once this dries and I start to add another dark shadow layer all right so now we're adding that little rock wall I talked about and it's just a little barrier to I think it's there to prevent erosion of the sand and also just to keep the waves down a little bit so that sticks out a little bit into our nice little bay. I added a little shadow on the other side of it, just using some phthalo blue, a little bit of black, a little bit of white. And just kind of let that blend down into the water. And now I'm taking some of my purple, pink, and white, and I'm adding a nice little highlight on the sand where the little waves are starting to come back into the water. And there isn't like a full wave on the sand, but it's like that point where the sand is still wet and the wave is like falling back into the water. <laughs> so it's wet sand, I guess you could say. And I just do a nice little outline there around the whole little bay, just blending it into the sand base color, just to brighten up that section a little bit. It's just reflecting the light of the sky. So we have some pinks in there, a little bit of yellows and oranges get in there as well. Now I'm going over that again with another brighter highlight. And this is basically contacting the water at this point, just right between the sand and the water. And this is the part where we actually do have like physical, like an, at least an inch of water <laughs> over the sand. So it's not just wet sand at this point anymore. We actually have 
water over the sand that's like truly reflecting the light in the sky. I continue to paint this little section of water contacting the sand on the left side of the little bay there and drawing my brush all the way over to the right side just to get like a nice little separation between the deeper water and the sand. I'm twisting my brush as I'm dragging it across the canvas and that's just getting the excess paint off of the brush from all the little sides of the brush. Getting a nice thick application of paint here and starting to warm that color up by adding some of my yellow mixed with white, a little bit of orange mixed with white. And I'm just painting that right over that nice bright line there. Now I'm taking some of my umber mixed with a little bit of blue and I am creating a little shadow on the lower side of this little wave or contact point between the water and land. And now I'm taking the brush. There's not a lot of paint on the brush here. It's almost like a dry brushing technique. And I'm just pushing the brush back and forth on the sandy area and starting to create that texture that we see in sand. So it's giving us those little hints of shadow from the uneven sand from people walking all over this little beach all day. And this is just the sand color with a little bit of black added or a little bit of purple added as well, just to bring it that tone down just a little bit so that it stands out from the base color of the sand. Here I'm blending some of my turquoise, my white, and my flesh tint, and starting to add a nice little highlight that's reflecting the sky color a bit, but still on the cool side of the spectrum. Here we have just like light being reflected without capturing those true colors in the sunset yet, just brightening up the water. I started to add some of this Liquitex medium and that helps me to carry out these brush strokes with a little bit more uh, fluidity. It's not quite as dry looking and it's not quite as textured. It kind of lets me drag that paint out in a smoother style. Here I'm starting to blend in a little bit more white and more of that flesh tint and including hints of orange as well. So we're starting to warm up this color and we're just going to add that right here under the sun where we have that nice reflection of the brightest thing in the sky, which is the sun. And it's just uh, starting to carry out from the center and out into the sides using back and forth brush strokes with this medium flat tipped brush. As I make my way to the left and right sides of the canvas away from center, I'm starting to carry in more of my cooler tones. So more of my blues and purples are getting in there. And the central part of the canvas is where we're going to have most of our really warm, bright reflection colors. So just continuing to make those back and forth brush strokes, not completely covering up that base layer of paint, still letting some of that base layer of paint show underneath, and that's going to help build up the depth of the water and make it look like we have an uneven water surface. So we have some waves breaking and some points where the light is reflecting what we see behind the water and some points reflecting what would be behind us or up above us. So more blues in that area, just getting a nice 
good variety of color in the water for our sunset here. At first, my colors are more muted. As you can see, my colors in the water are not as vibrant as the colors in the sky just yet. Once I get this base layer of highlight, then I go back and I'll start to add more of those vibrant colors. I want that nice highlight, bright reflection of the sunlight to be right up against that horizon line. So that's what I'm doing there. Carefully going over that horizon line just under the sun with those warmer reflection colors. I'm continuing to build up those highlights, incorporating more white into my palette there just to make a brighter highlight. Still carrying those highlights down and closer to the foreground making my waves get a little bit bigger as they're coming closer to the foreground. And as we get into this little bay area, I'm starting to leave a little bit more space in between my highlights where the waves are kind of separating out and we can see each individual wave a little bit better. I'm holding the brush at an angle to get a nice thin line that creates the look of small waves coming in. And you want to make sure that you somewhat follow that same arc shape. You don't want to have like a horizontal line coming all the way down from the back of your ocean all the way to the foreground because when the waves hit that little barrier and start to make their way into the bay, they're going to follow that same shape uh, that we have for the little that little arc there. So make sure you get a little bit of an arc in your wave patterns. As you can see here, I'm kind of paralleling that nice bright highlight which marks the contact between the water and the sand. Starting to incorporate a little bit more color in here, got some more pinks and oranges. Just quickly working, kind of just dry brushing this onto here. If you want to include more medium and thin your paint down, you're welcome to do that. That might make it look a little more fluid and realistic. I was going for a little bit more of an expressive approach with this one, so the brush strokes uh, are a little bit more visible and a little more dry looking. And now we can start to add some shadows in the water part. So wherever there's a highlight, you're going to have a shadow as well. Here I'm just using my blue mixed with brown. Might be a hint of purple in there as well. And I'm carefully putting a little shadow there at the contact point between that wet wave coming back in and then where the actual water like meets that point. And it's starting to bring things a little closer to the realism spectrum as we add these shadows. Again, starting to kind of keep a parallel line to that arc shape we have for the little bay here. Not perfectly parallel. And then starting to draw a diagonal line or paint a diagonal line there where the waves are coming in from the left side of the canvas and just coming in at like a diagonal and breaking at that nice little barrier and 
calming down as they enter the little bay. When you add your shadows to the waves, make sure that your lines are getting thinner and smaller and a little closer together as they're moving farther off into the distance for your ocean here. If you keep your shadows evenly spaced and just as thick as they look in the foreground, where at the front of this little bay, if you make it exactly like that in the far background part of your ocean, then that's not going to read realistically uh, and you're going to lose your depth in your painting. So by making your shadows smaller, a little bit closer together, like thinner lines as they're moving farther back into the ocean or even like I did there like just like a dry brush where we almost just lose them in the distance and we, they're not quite as defined anymore. That helps push depth into your painting and it makes it look more realistic. Just keeping that same color for the shadows basically everywhere. The only change I had in the shadow color is I incorporated a little more purple in the shadows in the center part of the canvas and that is because our highlight is much warmer so our shadow becomes a little warmer as well. So the shadow becomes more purple there when our highlights are more orange and pink and yellow. I'm going back with another round of highlights now, just brightening up the highlights and making them stand out a little bit more from my base color. Just quickly moving the brush, letting it create these little zigzag patterns right over our shadows. trying to get a nice even amount of highlight and shadow across the canvas and a nice even amount of detail across the canvas as well. I don't want to leave one section of the water just like bland without any highlights or shadows. Even if that did exist in nature, I want to get a good balance from left to right, from top to bottom on my canvas. So I'm starting to incorporate a little bit more highlight and shadow from the left side to the right side, just making sure everything is a little bit more of an even space and it's not drawing our attention to one specific part of the water. The main focus of this painting should be that sunset. That should be the first thing you see when you look at this painting, that bright sun setting. And that's basically it for the water. So the water gets covered up with these palm trees uh, for at least a portion of the water. So you don't have to go too crazy with detail in the water. As long as you have your colors right and you got those brush strokes down for the shadows and the highlights, then it's going to read as water. Uh, the palm trees in the foreground are mostly in silhouette. So I'm just using some cool tones here. Uh, you could blend your burnt umber with black and phthalo blue to get this base color. Uh, you could also put a little bit of sap green in there when you're doing the branches on the palm trees, but you want to keep these values very dark in general. We can start to add a little bit of highlight later, but since these trees are between us and the sunset, they're going to be more of a silhouette. So I just started by getting these stems, or not stems, but <laughs> uh, these trunks, the palm tree trunks from the base up to the point where they become the palm branches. Uh, and as you can see, the tallest one comes up past the middle point of top to bottom on the canvas, but not by much. If you want to make your palm trees taller, you can, but then your palm trees might become the focus of the painting if they take up a lot of the painting. So you can make your palm trees however size you want, uh, but the size of them is going to change the focal point of the painting and it's also going to change your size of the water behind it. So just putting in that those branches on that palm tree gives you an idea of how big that bay is. So those are tall palm trees. So that bay is pretty big and it's just behind it. So it just kind of puts things into like 
perspective for you and like gives you um, like more of a size ratio. You can see how big things are in relation to another object. So if you make your palm trees much bigger, that's going to make the ocean look like it's farther away or look like the bay is a little bit smaller. Uh, so that's just something to keep in mind when you paint your palm trees. So for my base color for these palm trees, I used my phthalo blue with my sap green and some burnt umber. And that's just like my go-to shadow green color uh, for a base color usually. So I get the shapes in for each little palm. You don't have to go too uh, crazy with the getting these palm branches to be at a specific angle. Just kind of make them come out from the center point in all different directions. And then you can drag your brush down from that main line to create these little branches coming off of your main branch. And I don't have too, too much paint on the brush. If you have your paint overloaded on the brush, then you're not going to get these thinner lines with the, that like illusion of detail for your palm branches. Uh, you're just going to get more of a blob. So, and if you don't use enough, then you're going to get like the dry brush look where you don't have an opaque branch. So you want to get that nice happy middle, <laughs> middle spot where you can get some detail, but you're still having an opaque base color for your palm trees. And the palm trees go pretty quickly. It's just... Here's a branch here, here's a branch here, here's a branch here, and okay, let's move on to the next one. So once I finish getting the base color and shape down for each of these little palm trees. I let that dry for a bit and then we go back and start to add some more detail onto the palm trees. You don't have to do this next step. Like if you want to just leave the painting and call it done after these little palm trees get their base color, then you're welcome to do that. But if you want to go into a little bit more detail and you don't feel like it looks like it's quite done yet, then stick around and we're going to keep working on this. Alright guys, the last few steps of this painting tutorial are pretty quick. First I just take some of my black with a little bit of burnt umber and my sap green and I just put a little border between the tree or between the grassy area and the sand and that just gives us a little ledge there. Now I'm adding another little round of highlights onto the water in places where I feel like we don't have even coverage of detail or where we need to just sprinkle in a couple little highlights. And then our, for our final touch we just add a highlight to our palm trees to give them a little bit of depth and uh, show where our light source is. So we know that our light source is on the other side, farther away from us um, than the palm trees, so behind the palm trees. Uh, therefore, we want most of our highlights on the palm trees to be on like the tops of these branches and kind of like filtering through the little palm leaves. Um, we don't want to have the foreground be like the most lit up with just a little shadow underneath. We want it to be mostly in shadow with just like hints of those little highlights on the tops and just kind of filtering through some of the branches. And once we add that, then we call this a finished painting. If you want to continue going with more detail, you could start to add a little bit of uh, rings around those um, trunks for the palm trees. You could go in with a liner brush on the water and put some more uh, shadows and highlights in there. You could add some clouds if you'd like, but this is where I decided to stop with this one and call it a finished painting. 
Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for your support on Patreon. I appreciate it. And if you guys have any recommendations for future painting videos, then just let me know. Have a great day and happy painting. Bye-bye.